bridge pin holes on this old 12er. And I got these, I got a quarter inch drill bit. Maple plugs. Really cool. Because they're nice and smooth. And, uh, and glue them in. They're not like a dowel. If you were to use a dowel, you can see all this open grain, like end grain. And these are uh, more of a face grain plug. I'll get the bridge. Well, I'll come back to this right here. all these little plugs fitted and labeled and uh, liquid hide glue oops a little too much do this for the rest of the 16 plugs all right now that I got the uh, this is dried overnight I kind of filled in some of these other spots with some uh, rosewood sawdust mixed in with some hide glue and I dropped in a little super glue here and there but I'm gonna get everything nice and flush and then I'll sand it then I'll fit the, uh, the bridge and as far as the bridge is looking, it's uh, kind of looking like this. So, here we go. And here's a couple things that work real good. I got a piece of plexiglass or whatever, eight, eighth inch thick, um, with some like 80 grit sandpaper. It allows me to see right where I'm sanding. See right through that plexiglass. That way I don't get uh, outside the lines there. And this little planer here, it's got a convex shape to it. Is nice for getting it real nice and smooth. Combinations of the two things after the 80 grit the 120 and 220 actually 120 is enough for uh, to get the hide glue to stick so I'll keep going like that for a little while and get her all smooth and then I'll go to the next step now that I got all them plugs all ground flush I'm gonna sand the bottom of this bridge to fit the, I've got just some masking tape and a, a piece of 120 glued super glued to it so it's gonna be a whole lot of this back and forth stuff for a while I kind of wish I had some higher or lower grit sandpaper even Gonna take a while. So if you're wondering what that, that's uh, some old Brazilian rosewood veneer. The deal with this guitar was the the bridge was tilted a bit too much this way. So instead of trying, and, and the top is really solid. It's just got this hump in it. So what I did is I built up the front edge of the bridge with a little more veneer and this edges here to take up the difference, which gave it just a bit more of a, a flattening effect. And uh, that's all it really needs to perform well anyways. Oh, and these 
drilling the hole. I got the tapered reamer here. I'm gonna fit each pin nice and easy. So there's that one bolt going through the joint. What I did was I uh, loosened it and I scored. I actually took a, a little engraving bit on the Dremel and I cut away all that polyurethane. I can see there's no glue in that joint right there. I can just stick my knife in there like that. So let me see if I can just pull this neck right off. Looky there, there's no tenon. I've, this whole time I've been thinking there's a tenon in here, but there seems to be a couple dowels and in between there is the uh, the bolt and Then up here. There's a little block of some kind. So there might be a short tenon, but let's let's see if I can get it apart <clears throat> It it just does not want to come apart I've tried I've tried heating it back up I think it's going to come apart. Right now I've got it clamped, the neck clamped into the vise and the body, I'm just wiggling it. It seems to be, the gap seems to be getting bigger. Yeah, I can kind of see through that gap right now. There's a... I'm glad I got where the other one went, but I had to several of these small knives and I was ever able to stack them in there kind of wedge them like that and uh, get behind it as you see here this is this is in a vise right there that's my Stumac guitar vise um, so I was able to get those jammed in there enough and give it a wiggle up down this way and boom popped out so there's four dowels and a bolt. We'll get a look at the other side of it right here. The truss rod. That's what that I thought felt like a tendon. It's the truss rod. And, um, and there's that bolt. So now I can get to resetting that neck. Polyurethane's so thick on here that it's like a total thick layer of plastic. I had to chip away at it quite a bit. The celluloid was not a problem. I put this uh, binding tape on it. I put the binding tape on the c over the celluloid, and then I put frat uh, protectors, and then I put the iron on there to heat it up. I didn't have to take that fret out at all that I could put that right back in now there's no steam needed in this uh, neck removal situation so there it is
exact same dowels right back into the neck where they were in the first place. Yeah, it's cheesy, but this guitar, it demands cheese, extra cheese. Extra cheesy. Yep. Extra cheese. Hey, look at this. Like blushing happened on the guitar. See that? sanding it with the belt sander 220 180 220 320 um, I'm just gonna wipe on some shellac I keep the shellac in a Louisiana hot sauce bottle because uh, it's easy to pour into other vessels and uh, I like to add a drop of linseed oil just to keep the pad moving this guitar is just not worth spraying and wet sanding and buffing and yada yada yada. It's just not worth it to me. I've already taken the neck off and gone through all that, finding out what that's what's going on with that. And uh, replace the bridge there's 12 strings that was the bridge was a you saw earlier I keep pouring a little shellac on here and thin it down a little bit too with some denatured alcohol a couple drops and a drop of oil just to keep things moving along instead and not sticking. If your pad gets stuck and it starts skipping, skidding along actually is what it more like what it does, it skids. Um, so wiping on shellac will leave some streaky lines. Like you can see the little brush strokes, it almost looks like when it's dry. But after you get up, I don't know, about a dozen coats, you can, um, what I'll do is get some mineral oil and some like 2000 grit and just kind of wet sand it with oil and uh, then wax it with car wax. It should look pretty nice missed a spot right there. For the most part, I got a lot of it off, though. It shouldn't be a tremendous eyesore like it used to be. First, I used a Forstner's bit to make a spot where the uh, the rim of the insert can kind of countersink down into the heel. Now I'm taking a, what was it, 11 30 seconds bit? Here it is, final assembly. I didn't film the whole day of work because this video is just getting too long. I had a lot of stuff to do. Make a new nut, um, get that bolt to fit in there just right, and uh, make a little wedge for the fretboard extension. It was it was lifted off um, the body quite a bit, so I also had to put a radius on the, the bridge saddle.
it was completely flat like a classical guitar. So I wasn't quite sure how that would all work out, but um, at the end of the day it worked out great. And uh, hopefully tomorrow I'll get some strings on it and hear how it sounds. I put a couple strings on it. Sounds, I can tell it's going to sound pretty good.